Hello, you're listening to the Shelton Times podcast. I'm your podcast host, Marie Lynn Robertson. And this week I'm joined by Louise Thomason. Hi, Louise. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for joining me today. No, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, and thanks to my sister Fletcher for babysitting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because you've got Soren here today. Yep, we're in Waz and um, Soren and Tova have been, I want to say terrorising, but that's maybe a bit harsh, but they've been, yeah, they've been playing hard. For anyone <coughs> listening who's not aware, Soren is Louise's baby and Tova is Fletcher's baby. Yeah. Who's my sister who's looking after them when we record this. Um, can you please introduce yourself more to listeners? Yes, um, so I'm Louise. I am currently living in Quarf. I'm from Shetland, from kind of Fettler and the South End. Um, spent lots of time in both of them growing up. I am a writer. I'm currently working for NB Communication. Yeah, that's that's me. And you started for NB Communication when they got the Yeah, so in October, contract. yeah. just I was doing a bit of freelance work for them before that and... Yeah, they got a great contract to promote Shetland in October, so that's when I started working for them. Cool, so what specifically do you do there for them? A bit of content writing, I'm actually a project manager, so I'm just kind of one of the NB crew, <laughs> just <laughs> doing a bit of everything. But yeah, I do a lot of content writing for all of the clients. I'm guessing it's quite exciting, is there things coming out that you're working on now to come out in the future as well? Not so much at the moment, but at the moment we're kind of stuck into up hell yeah stuff, so yeah. that's taken up a lot of our focus. Yeah. And I suppose there's a natural shift to outdoors and somewhere. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of always looking, trying to think a couple of steps ahead about what's coming up, but it's it's a really exciting thing to be doing. I love thinking it, it's it's good because it makes me think about Shetland more as a place to appreciate in some ways, rather than just taking it for granted as somewhere that you live. I yeah, think. that's true. And I, but I, always, I, I kind of always thought about that about you because you have your blog. Mm. Yeah, thank you. I've got... Can you tell the listeners about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got this blog called Girl in the North Sea. And I actually don't really know how to describe it because it started just as a place to dump thoughts, I think, <laughs> publicly. <laughs> and it's kind of, yeah, it's, I, it's still a bit like that, to be honest. I'm not really sure how to categorise it, but yeah. I think that's really nice, though, because when you don't categorise it per se, it leaves you up and try to be whatever you're thinking about or is affecting you mm-hmm. or something you want to share. It doesn't limit you as the content you can put in yeah definitely I think I mean blogs people have blogs for lots of different reasons and I never started mine with the aspiration to make money or anything so it was very much just here's I want to write about something and that was my outlet and as time's gone on I have sometimes thought like oh why am I doing this and is there should I be focusing on one specific thing but whenever I do I get really bogged down and thinking too much about what I'm writing and it just yeah it doesn't really work so yeah almost damns the flow yeah definitely so <clears throat> did you do writing before you started your blog did yeah did you study writing or? no I actually did politics at uni and when I came home to Shetland I kind of came home to stay for a summer <laughs> <laughs> doing, co- doing quote marks yeah <laughs> and then I got a job at the Shetland Times actually and ended up uh, working there and at first I was just working in, in the office in the newsroom and started writing for them and I loved it so that's what my first writing job was there I've been really lucky to get quite a lot of writing work in Shetland I've worked for I think most local publications at one point or another so yeah it's really interesting as well just to go back to the point of you saying you're going to come home for a summer mm-hmm. did you think that you were going to come home after you need to save up a bit and leave and yeah why why did you feel that way um I well I never really knew I've never really known what I wanted to do yeah. still kind of millennial yes classic. Exactly. <laughs> and um I kind of I did politics which was a really kind of academic degree and worked for a bit in Glasgow in kind of horrible jobs just to make a bit of money and thought well I'll go home collect my thoughts and maybe make some money and then kind of I'll have a better idea of what I want to do. But when I got home, I kind of got that job and was quite happy actually being home. And, and yeah, I just ended up staying and and realising it's not, not such a bad place to be, really. So Yeah. yeah. I know what you mean as well, because when I first went to uni, I think the first year I was like, I am definitely going home to Shetland and doing this and never leaving. And towards the end of my degree, I was thinking, oh, I might go home in like 20 years' time. <laughs> and then I came home and was like, I forgot how much I... I'm just so happy being here and I love being here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think probably there's points where I would have gone away again, but for whatever reason the time didn't work out, like I didn't have enough money or I didn't have a job to go to, and I've always just just ended up being here and and enjoying it, actually. And I've made such good friends. I've got really, really good friends and, yeah, great family. And there's never really been a good enough reason to go, I think. So, yeah. 
that's why I like what you do as well, because with your blog, you are working, and with all your writing, you're doing a creative mm. a creative profession in Shetland, mm-hmm. and I always love to see that flourish. Yeah. So, I don't know, I, I, I'm not a promote mine because it's terrible, but I have a blog, <laughs> and I wrote it originally because I wanted to keep myself writing in some form after I finished uni yeah. and have essays to do anymore, and now it's just like a sporadic hole for thoughts that I like um, scavenge for material for jokes hopefully um, but that's why I started it were yeah. you a similar idea yeah basically well I actually started my blog years ago like I think 2012 <clears throat> didn't tell anybody about it didn't really like pub like make it public and just because I really loved reading blogs and I liked looking at nice pictures and I was like oh yeah this is a nice creative thing to do that didn't have a lot of pressure on it like of having too many people looking at it but I didn't do anything with it so basically it was dormant until um, I think I started writing it again 2015 so I'd had oh no it was maybe the year after I had Soren my pretty boy and um, I think at that point I was on maternity leave and I just was like kind of had that I don't know a new baby thing of like feeling like I was losing my identity a pretty bit yeah. <laughs> as a new mom and kind of Almost just, cabin fever? Yes, definitely cabin <laughs> fever, yeah. And just was like, oh, I had all these ideas and things that I was realising actually about motherhood that I, I couldn't believe nobody had told me about. And I was like, what? Lots of it I found really hard and, you know, just was just shocked at, like, the reality of being a stay-at-home mum, actually. And so that's kind of how I got back into blogging regularly. But, yeah, it's definitely a great creative outlet, especially for, I think, maybe sometimes being in Shetland where you feel you can feel like you're kind of cut off from this buzz of stuff that's going on in the world. Yeah. But you're not actually, like, there's... Yeah. You can create a lot of your own things to do or, you know, being having the blog has actually made me focus more on what I'm doing and think about having ideas to share. And So, yeah, it's been really good. And with writing about things such as, like, motherhood and Mm. um, especially... Did you find there's a huge community for that online? Oh, God, yeah. That was one of the best things about it is having people just be able to say like yes I feel like that too or you know you're totally this is all normal it's fine to feel like this and I've had such lovely comments from people like completely unprompted that's just been brilliant it's been really lovely so yeah that's the best thing this whole kind of online community of and just people just communicating with people it's nice to be able to do that online I think yeah yeah I know because it might sound I don't know listeners of you read vlogs but there is a real community and, mm-hmm. and in the different genres of blog too, like a friend who does a pattern designing and clothes mm-hmm. making blog, mm-hmm. and she tells me about it, and there's like millions of people yeah. who blog about this, and they all support one another. Yes. So I imagine definitely that in the different veins of blogs, you get that you get part of a community <coughs> from across the world. I think so. Yeah. I mean, the internet. I kind of. I think sometimes the internet gets a hard. Well, I mean, the internet is very broad, but like, <laughs> yeah. there's there's definitely horrible parts of the internet, but there's such lovely people online too. It's lovely to be able to kind of connect with like-minded people. So, yeah. Do you find also Shetland... Because <coughs> Shetland is a unique selling point. You don't even have have mm-hmm. that as a question, but do you find that's also promoted further? And have you... I don't know, to be honest. Because one thing I'm very bad at is, like, looking at the... Like, I'm quite bad at the actual blog inside of it. Okay. I'm bad at, you know, like... When I first started writing it, then it was purely just the writing. I just put it up. And then I was like, oh, I wonder, like, I wonder who's who's looking at this and kind of started looking into the, the numbers and stuff but I, I'm really bad at that I don't do a lot of like SEO or all this stuff like I mean and I know having worked for MB I'm like oh yeah these are things I should SEO? be doing oh so this is it's <laughs> called um it's search engine optimization oh okay I think I do this religiously of mine because I find it so interesting see I do find it interesting <laughs> for work so, but I, I'm really bad at applying it to my own blog. And I think it's because the way that I write, then I don't, like, so if you're wanting to monetize your blog and you're like, okay, I want X many people to look at this this post about whatever it is, nappies or something. I yeah. Don't know, then you would put certain terms in so that people looking for that would yeah. find it. So I don't really write like that. So a lot of the things I've written about, I'm like, how do I get this term into, and it feels really unnatural. So. Yeah, it feels like you're advertising something that's a personal story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I've not really done much of that. So I do that a lot though because I blog about things like films I've seen. Yeah. Or I just write a blog about Metallica. So I'm like, <laughs> I've been people come to my blog because they've searched Metallica and I'm like, oh, they're going to be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Poor people. <laughs> but yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny world when it goes that that fine line between 
like something that's really I don't know how I'm not saying people who monetize their blog aren't wholesome but that fine line between wholesome mm-hmm. for yourself mm-hmm. slash to make money and pr- promoting brands yeah yeah exactly and it's sometimes but sometimes that can be natural within the story of your blog it's, yeah, it's strange that's the thing and I don't think there's anything necessarily bad with that at all because some of these you know like it, it's actually quite a lot of work sometimes like doing the whole blogging thing and I can see why people would want to make a bit of money off it if they're doing it anyway but yeah, no, I, I'm not very good at checking the numbers and knowing <laughs> who's looking at it. But I do get comments from people speaking about Shetland, so I guess it must be part of the and you, appeal. You also said that you should know her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I find that just a really cool concept as well. Do you want to explain that to listeners? Yeah, so I have a series of interviews on my blog called You Should Know Her. And it's um, interviews with women who are doing interesting or inspiring things. And it's really broad you know there's no kind of narrow category and i've spoken to some fantastic people we've had a couple of shetlanders we've had gabby cleanus oh yeah uh, yeah milk cafe fame and uh helen nisbet from yale yeah and uh just some fantastic people the most recent one was amy liptrop which was a dream of an interview to get she's an author and so yeah we did i had an interview with her about sea swimming yeah just fantastic and it's it's been really good to be able to like share other people's kind of stories as well as my own ram- ramblings. So it's like <laughs> set questions? Or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it tends to be the same kind of questions each time. Um, I just ask them, you know, what they do, how they got into what they're doing, that kind of thing, what they're inspired by as well. And I, I mean, it's because the people are quite different, obviously you have to change some of the questions, like I've had authors and I had another Shetland last, well, she's not from Shetland, but she lives in Shetland. She runs the tannery up north. Um, oh wow cool yeah <clears throat> so yeah ask them about what they're doing how they got into it and what their life is like doing that thing so yeah that's cool and do you feel a good Thank response you. to that as well brilliant yeah that's probably one of the most popular things actually oh do you remember another one sorry vivian ross smith is oh one? yeah i'm just feel, feeling bad now if i've left out anybody that is connected to shetland <laughs> well just direct people to your blog yeah basically you can just <laughs> have a look on the blog but yeah and how do you find it as well? Do you think you get a... We talked about following, but do you get a lot of fucking shit on reading it as well? And how is that writing per- perhaps personal pieces that, you know, people around you can have access to? Yeah. Well, when I first started, I kind of... I was so, so nervous to start sharing stuff because it's, I find it really nerve-wracking doing anything in a small community. Like, I, I'm quite... I'm actually quite an introvert. I don't really like being the centre of attention, so I was quite nervous about the idea of people I know reading things. But... I've had really, really good responses. Like, the first time I shared a post on Facebook, it was mainly local people. Like, it was my pals online, who are, a lot of them were local. And they were so supportive and so lovely that it made me feel really good about being like, ah, oh, this is okay. I can, yeah. <laughs> I can do this. So, Which is funny, because having written for local papers, I'm used to people, you know, reading things connected to my name, but there's something different about sharing your own personal ideas and things. Yeah. It is funny, and it's also what you said about enjoying your job because it makes you appreciate Shetland. Mm. But I think I like reading, especially at creative folks' posts or blogs or looking at their Instagrams, who are also based in Shetland or have come to Shetland, because it does make you enjoy your own home more. Yeah, you definitely. Know what I mean? So, like, looking at the photos you've taken of Shetland, how funny it is. You're like, yeah, I live here. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's nice. No, totally. I get that completely. I love seeing people's... It is great when you stumble across a Shetlander's Instagram or, or see their photos because you're seeing a different perspective. It's like places you know, but from a slightly different angle. Yes. It's, it's great. Yeah, I love that. So, um, also, for writing your blog and doing your work for NB Communications, do you do a lot of work for home? <laughs> yes, I do still do a bit of work from home, mainly writing work, and it's been really good to be able to do that especially having had a baby sometimes well I was actually made redundant while I was on maternity leave oh, nothing nothing illegal oh no 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 no, no. <laughs> it was just um yeah it was it was crap timing but it was at the time though I actually was like quite I was I was okay with it because I was so enjoying that first year it was great yeah um and I couldn't really imagine leaving Soren to go back to work and so at first I was like oh it's fine and then I the harsh reality of you know finances <laughs> hit me and I was like oh no it's not fine but I've been able to do freelance work doing writing from home and it's just been really good I mean it's hard it's hard to balance working and living in the same place I think I'm not very I think you need to be quite disciplined it yeah. works for some people yeah <laughs> for me I'm like oh there's uh, stuff to do that's not work and I just procrastinate massively so same. 
Do you have a set creative space within your house where you lock yourself away? Or? I do try. Well, I did try to. I, we have an office that at the moment is so shamefully messy and sh- a shambles <laughs> that like I always end up working at the, sh- the kitchen table. It's just still full of like Christmas decorations and <laughs> <laughs> just random stuff that needs to go to charity. And <laughs> so, but no, that is helpful. When that was an office, that was great because at least I could go and separate it a bit. Do you even, like, when you're working from home, because more and more fuck do these days, do you, do you have a way where it's like, okay, it's my writing day, I'm going to wake up, have breakfast right this time and treat it like I'm at a workplace? Yes, or do you, I had more to relaxed? do that. No, I had to be like, I had to get up, get dressed for work, have my breakfast and go and work, set a timer to make myself focus for that chunk of time, because oh. I would just be, I like, if I don't do that, the opposite of that is getting up and maybe washing the dishes and then like maybe it would always be I would love to say oh no I would like go for a run but it was always really boring domestic stuff that I would end up doing because <laughs> I couldn't work if it, if something like I'm not actually a very tidy person but as soon as I had like some work to do I'd be like oh I need to tidy so yeah um, I know that's the same with a lot of people and a lot of students yeah as soon as they go to revise they hoover their room for yeah, the first time exactly so <laughs> I felt like if I didn't have I had to just do it get up and do it and then yeah that's is I find it really interesting to hear about other folk yeah, do it as well. I do too, and I think people like you forget how different people can be working from home. Cause, yeah, yeah. Chris is my my partner. My husband is a freelance musician, freelance musician, self employed musician. Yeah. Uh, so he does a lot of work at home, and we have very very different working styles. He can like just work surrounded by shambles and gets on fine. Whereas I'm like, no, I can't can't do it <laughs> it's also difficult because I suppose you're both writing he's writing music mm. and you're writing words mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but doing that it's like I don't know because I always feel like you do want to say I'll start writing at nine mm. but sometimes if you force yourself then it's creatively so difficult this and you have is, to yeah, let yourself no that's exactly it I feel like it's very difficult sometimes for me to align my like the time I have to do something with my like capacity to do it yeah <laughs> sometimes I'm, I can't do it till late at night and I have to just go with that and but I'm getting a little bit better at just being like, no, I have to do it now. And even him just making a start makes me feel a bit better. And then, and then also you've got son as well. Mm-hmm. So it's not just you in the house, then you've got your yeah. your bairn as well. Yeah. So that must take even more discipline for when you have those moments. Yeah, that's it. It's actually, <laughs> especially like, yeah, those times, sometimes you have to just be like, no, I need to sit down and not do anything for a while. and <laughs> Just not feel guilty about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, I think uh, there's another aspect too. It's like you make sure you have time to enjoy yourself. Because mm-hmm. I work best at night, but then if I've procrastinated thinking I've been working all day and then write for five hours at night, then I realise I haven't yeah, had I any time. One thing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I procrastinate all day. Yeah. One thing I've actually gotten a pretty bit better at is being, being able to recognise when I'm not working. If I've sat down to work and nothing's happening and I've been sitting there for an hour pretending to work, and just being like, no, I've got to go for a walk or do something and then come back to it. Sometimes I've come back to it and been able to finish working and other yeah. times I'm like, no, nah, it's a write-off. We'll try again. <laughs> try again tomorrow. I think that's really interesting. Have you got any blog posts coming soon as well that people can keep eyes on? I or have just... some more exciting You Should Know Her's coming up. And yeah, that's really it for the moment. I'm having a bit of a bit of a dry spot writing. <laughs> Dry spell, even. It's January. Yeah. January, just, February, those months. <laughs> yeah. I've got some exciting things coming up with a blog, but nothing that I can really pinpoint. Do you have advice for anyone who's thinking to start a blog or something creative online? Or perhaps even just writing at home? I think just do it, basically. Just do it and do it a lot. I think don't put any pressure on yourself as to how it should be or just write about the things that you enjoy and don't think too much about people reading it or... Um, how it's going to be perceived if you just yeah and write whatever you want and kind of just get it out and then you can always come back to it or and just enjoy it I think that's the best thing to do is just yeah write it and enjoy it yeah and it's funny it is funny when you talk about procrastinating because I couldn't think of anything better to do than to sit and write what I want to write yeah yeah even when you're doing the thing you really want to do you find steps not to do it I know that's exactly how I feel <laughs> I always feel like, oh, I never have enough time to write stuff. I really want to go and have time to write. And then sometimes I'll have time to do it. And then I'm like, oh, I've not I've not really looked for any new jeans in a while. I might just have a quick look and see if I... Uh, like, what? Yeah. You don't need jeans. Just, yeah. And also, this may be a completely different discipline, um, but would you ever write short stories or long stories as well? I've tried writing fiction 
fictional things and I really enjoy it. It's something I want to do more of because I, yeah, I, I love the challenge of trying to do it. I used to do it a lot more when I was younger and loved it and it's something I've not done for a while but I've been thinking about, I mean there must be writer groups here to get involved There in. are, I know several. Yeah. <laughs> in fact that'd be a nice maybe interesting future podcast but there's yes. writer <laughs> groups around Shetland. Excellent. And uh, they meet up, so... Yeah, because I stumbled across this thing that probably people listening to might know about, the NaNoWriMo thing. Oh, I don't know about this one. Well, it's an acronym, I think, of National... Oh, no, I'm not going to get it right, but it's National... NaNo... Author? National something writing month. Basically, the idea is that you write a certain number of words every day for a month, I think it is. This is in November? Yes. I do know this. It's something in November... Something. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, and I was googling about this, and I found this like sh- people in Shetland are doing it. Probably, I know. So I know Hannah has done it. Hannah Nicholson. Mm, cool. Yeah. And I, my friend Joe Christie, who I also ah, yes. he's done it as well, I believe. Brilliant. Yeah. So yeah, I thought I would retry something like that. It sounds really just good fun. So. Yeah. And then is it a page or a chapter a month to make a bad yeah. actual story? Actual it's story. Yeah. Yeah. I think. And having that kind of chunk of like concentrated effort to do something is probably makes it a pretty bit more that you're likely to do it I yeah think. and the camaraderie yes everyone's online yes. doing it together yeah exactly yeah. sounds great yeah well thank you so much for speaking to us today oh thank you so much yeah. for having me all the best with uh, your future work and i look forward to seeing it thank you very much thank you and thanks for listening listeners <laughs>